cool. Uh, I'm so good. I'm so stoked to be here, man. Look at y'all. Y'all showed up through the rain. Wow. Impressed. Impressed. Pretty amazing. Uh, where are my new folks? First time guests, can you just wave at me real quick? Woo-hoo! Come on, right, right here. Center. Thank you, front and center. Thank you guys for coming. Um, also, I wanted to, where are my grads again? Just raise your hand real quick. You graduated. Okay, and let me ask you another question. You graduated and you like burritos or you like Chipotle. Okay, that per- all right, you're excited about that. Matt Jackson, Pastor Matt Jackson, please, there's a lady right in the, raise your hand one more time again. Yeah, and where'd you graduate from? Burke High School, Burke Bulldogs, let's go. I love it, I love it. Uh, pro tip, by the way, lately, at Chipotle, they have what's called, um, it's, oh, what is it called? Uh, El Pastor chicken. So salad, chicken pastor. You don't have to be a pastor to eat it. I, I just, I'm literally addicted to it. I get the salad, chicken pastor. It, there's an anointing that falls when you do it. So I'm stoked for all of you grads, man. You got through it, even at Burke High School, all over the place. (laughs) No, I didn't mean that in a slight. I'm just saying, like, I love Burke. Burke, Burke Bulldogs. Got some homies from Burke. All right, Luke chapter one. You can turn your Bibles, I'm sorry. (laughs) Jeff Cook is like, dude, get to the Bible. All right, all right. You're wonderful. Uh, let's welcome our online fam. Can we do that? Let's Mama, do go ahead. It. Online, we love you. We're so glad you're here with us today. Drop in the chat where you're watching from. We want to welcome you officially. Um, what, do you think uh, OCs and oh, chats yeah. are? The I don't chats know if they're. And the OCs are away, so let's give God praise that they're doing yeah. the rest. We love you guys. Wish you were here, but we're so glad you're there. I love it. Well, those of you that haven't met, this is my wife, Denise Doxson, by the way. I'm Todd. And we left Fort Lauderdale, Florida 16 years ago to start this church. It was February 2008, negative 20 here. My wife looked at me like I was crazy. And uh, we just took a step of faith. And then years later, here we are. And we wanted to do, I, I wanted to bring her up on stage because um, I needed to apologize to you and then clarify something. And we do this every now and again. And uh, I love that so many of you are so graceful and forgiving and sometimes with so many things moving and shifting, we don't do a good enough job to be clear. And we have a a saying around the church, to be unclear is to be unkind. And so I want, I just, first of all, I wanna ask for uh, your forgiveness uh, and I just wanna make an apology. On Mother's Day, there, and probably a couple of times a year, I love when my wife is able to come and communicate. Mother's Day is one of them, by the way. And on Mother's Day, um, I just want her voice to flow through, it's God's voice through my wife to encourage ladies. And it said, Pastor Denise Doxson. And some people got rubbed the wrong way. And even on the website, I think the language was a little bit different on our new website. And what I I just wanted to do is number one, apologize, number two, just reassure you and, and remind you what we do together and what our vision is when it comes to leading this church. Um, I can get real theological, and I would, I, I would invite those conversations, but I wanna be kinda efficient with our, our time. So, you know, you can talk about uh, women in the church and their role and different things, you can talk complementarian, you can talk egalitarian, and I can have those conversations with you. I'm I'm guessing 90% of you not really worried about that. The 10%, happy to have those conversations. The way we look at it, and this is how we've run our family, this is how we've led the church, is we do it together. And uh, there's a couple in the Bible, uh, their name's Priscilla and Achilla. And it's kinda how we've always done things in our home. uh, We believe that God The value of man and woman is exactly the same. The roles are a little bit different, and that's how we've done it. Uh, I have led our home with the support and the wisdom and the understanding of my wife. She gives me all kinds of input, which I love. She makes 
95% of the decisions, I got five. Here's what I love though. I want her next to me and God's wisdom giving me understanding. What I love though is she is humble enough to say, sweetheart, I've prayed about this. Here's some thoughts, but I trust you to make the final decision. And that's just how I've, our households worked for the last you know, 24 years and the last 16 years of leading this church. We've done it together. Now, when it comes to corporate communication, again, there's different views on 1 Timothy 2, 1 Corinthians. Um, and I, I <laughs> how do I say this? I'm cool with all y'all. Like y'all have different views, that's cool. For me personally, I, I live by a phrase. And here, you guys ready for it? You can just jot this down because if this isn't what you feel good about as a church, there's great churches all over the city that are very much in one camp or another, but I'm kind of like both, egalitarian and complementarian. I'm kind of I'm both, sorry, but this is who I am. And here's the phrase, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, in all things, charity. For me, I major in the majors, I minor in the minors. I. If Jesus Christ is the only way to God, I will die on that hill. But women in church and Calvinism, Arminianism, and this and that, there's freedom, man. There, there's a lot of discussion on that. I'm just gonna stick to the main thing. I'm gonna teach the word, love people, and that's kind of who I am. Would you like to add anything? Look, the complementarian, the perfect complementarian. Would you like to add anything to that? No, I think, it's, I think it's incredible. And if you've been with us for the journey for 16 years, you know who's the leader of the house, right? It's very clear, but at the same time, we've been given the gift to help, and God's called me to help in certain ways, and I treasure that, and I want to honor our leadership and who God's assigned as leader. So I'm super thankful that you allow me the journey, the opportunity to journey along with you and what he's called him to. And I, I, I think it's an honor and it's a privilege, and I don't take it lightly but I'm blessed that we get to do this together. Yeah. I love it. So just to be clear again, um, you'll see Denise right here two, three times a year. Mother's Day, I want her voice. Uh, Fresh Start Weekend, when we're trying to help you deal with things with your heart, she's my number one, my, my number one communicator. And if that's a problem, I'm sorry, but that's just, that's my, my sense and that's my, my discernment right now. Um, again, and, and please hear me. Yeah. Hey man, like different strokes for different folks. I love you, man. Like yeah. no problem. But for me and my conviction is that's yeah. kind of where I'm at. And I would challenge you if you have a heart to go and talk to other people about why you don't believe what we believe, you may consider prayerfully, Lord, where would you have me go? Yeah. And that's okay. We that's love okay. you. We want what is the absolute best for you and your family. And if that means different leadership, praise the Lord. Yep. We're so excited. So we honor that. We love discussion. We love having conversations. So we welcome that as well. Yeah. And last thing I would say, and I, I've had good conversations with people that look at me in the eyes and they'll say, Pastor, can you help me understand this? Let's sit down and have some coffee. Let's sit down two on two. Can you help me understand this? All day long, I'll do that. What I really struggle with is, is when you go talk to other people. To me, I don't see that in the Bible. I see, Matt, if Matthew 18 says, if you have a question, come to the person, yeah. have a mature discussion. But yeah. we cannot, listen, listen. Right now, what God is doing, we cannot afford any division in the church. Amen, amen. No division. Yeah. No division. Yeah. Listen and you, again. And la, la, Go ahead. And here's the heart. I understand and I hope you hear us saying if you have a question and you want to discuss that with your friends, there's a way to do it without being divisive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when a pocket of friend group all have the same opinion, something happens. You know what I mean? So just be mindful of the way that you pose a question and are you what you're trying to do? Are we operating under a manipulative spirit? Are we operating under a divisive spirit or are we truly just genuine? 
and we have a question, that's okay, that's amazing. That's what, God doesn't expect you to walk with him blindly. He wants you to walk it out. It says to do that with fear and troubling, walk out your salvation, so. Again, last, last, last thing, and again, we have follow up. We'd love to meet with you and discuss further theologically. An essential is unity, not essential is liberty and all things charity. Our heart at this church is to help as many people as we can get to know God in their own Bible, go to heaven, experience his best. That's our goal. So if you wanna go with us along in this journey and have freedom on different theological bents, then this yeah. is the church for you. So right. just wanted to share that. Thank you for your grace. Mama, come on, hey, give it up for right. D-Money. Thank you, baby. I got it. Okay, okay, thank you guys, thanks for your patience. Luke chapter one, this is, where I, this is where I flow, sorry, this is like, this is where I love to be. And I love that you guys are reading along. Isn't it so cool this year, Matthew, Mark, Luke, just started Luke. Let me just give you a couple quick things about Luke. Luke was a physician, he was a doctor, God used him to write the gospel according to Luke, so really Jesus' life and ministry from his perspective. He was the only Gentile, non-Jew writer of the entire Bible, by the way. He wrote Luke and he wrote the book of Acts, which by the way, come on, somebody. We're gonna be finishing this year in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, as God began the, new, the church, man, it's gonna be so cool. But today, Luke, and uh, Luke chapter one, let me pray, let's get in and let's see what God wants to speak to us. God, what a privilege and honor to be with all my people, all my homies, all my homegirls, serious about the word of God, wanting to make a difference. Not just sit in the seats, but get out in the streets and invite people into their home and share the gospel and pray for people and be generous. That's the type of church I love being a part of. It's so amazing. And so today, we've all been reading throughout the week, here we are together to discuss what we've been reading. And so, as always, Holy Spirit, would you be the director? Would you be the speaker, the teacher? I, I'm just here by faith as a willing vessel through which you can communicate your heart to your people. So do what only you can do, God. Change our hearts, draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, have you ever lost your voice? Have you ever lost your, give me a nod maybe, ever lost your voice? Maybe some of y'all, um, many of us just from being sick. Raise your hand, right? You just lost your voice, cough too much. Um, how many lost your voice yelling at your kids too much? Raise your, raise your hand, okay, you sinners, no, no. <laughs> Um, I've lost my voice several times. Uh, a, I talk too much. Where my people talk too much, okay? Okay, all right. Let me pray for y'all in Jesus' name. Um, I'm a coach, and so I do raise my voice at times. I've lost my voice several times as a coach, uh, being sick. Probably I've lost my voice. It's a guarantee I lose my voice when I go to a Skillet show, a Skillet concert. <laughs> you guys don't know Skillet. They are a... Christian rock band, and my kids can confirm this, if they're within three hours, we are going to the concert. And I will scream, I know every lyric, and I will scream it. And so by the end of the night, I can't talk, and I can't hear, <laughs> because it's, it's so loud. And you go, why are you saying that? Well, you read about it, there's this guy, Zacharias. Let's call him Zach, everybody say Zach. Zach lost his voice. Now, he wasn't at a skillet show. <laughs> and it wasn't because he was yelling at his kids. He wasn't coaching. The reason he lost his voice is he had a lapse of faith. And now, before you go blaming him, the reason he had a lapse of faith is because his wife, Elizabeth, was barren. And he prayed for years that they would have a child, nothing. 
You ever, you ever just prayed for something for years and years and years, and it just seems like, it's like God's not listening? And there comes a point where you almost just start not believing that God can actually do it. We're all human in here. And there's a point where we have like, I don't know, we just lose our faith. I wonder if there's anybody here today that's just recently you've lost your faith. And maybe it isn't because of unanswered prayer, but just different things. You got kind of disconnected from the word. You got disconnected from your group. You got disconnected from church. You started getting into all the TV and the media and the politics and all the chaos. And, and just little by little, you just started losing your faith a little bit. I think we've all been there. The good news is, as you're reading, did you see it? This guy, by the way, Zacharias, he lost his voice for nine months. Man, where are my people that talk too much again? Where are you at? <laughs> that might not be a bad idea. I mean, go on a nine month silent retreat. My, and all the women and all the wives said, hey, amen, that dude talks way too much. The beauty is, you know what happened after nine months? Zacharias, by the way, the angel, God leads so wild. The angel told this Zacharias, he's like, hey, y'all gonna get pregnant, you're gonna have a baby, you're gonna name him John. And the reason he lost his voice, he's like, no, nah, man, you can't do that. Like, you know how old I am? Ain't gonna do it. He said, you're gonna name him John. Nine months later, what a, God's word is fulfilled. He's always gonna fulfill his word in his perfect timing, by the way. And I love it. And so what happens? He, he takes a writing tablet because the dude can't talk. And right when, they're, when Elizabeth's about to deliver a little Johnny the Baptist, by the way, he takes his little iPad and he just writes, his name is John. Right when he says that through his writing tablet, gets his voice back. Yeah. And I was just thinking, there's someone here today, you're gonna get your voice back. You know, and it's not just your voice that you lose. You lose your testimony. You lose opportunity. You, lo you lose life. You lose years. I came to bring good news, but you're gonna get your life back today. You're gonna get something back that you lost due to a lack of faith. Do you believe it? Does anybody at church believe the word of God today? I got three people. All right, let's, let's, let's get into the word. It's... Uh, Luke chapter one, verse five. When Herod was king of Judea, Luke chapter one, verse five, there's a Jewish priest named Zechariah. Let's call him Zach. Everybody say Zach. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations. You know, it's one thing if you're kind of that person that's like giving God you know, the, the finger and be like, ah, I'm gonna do whatever I want. It's, it's a whole nother thing where you're like, man, I'm following God. I'm, I'm, I'm careful to obey, but look what it just says. They're careful to obey, but look at verse seven. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. There's another translation. They were well stricken in years. <laughs> well stricken. It's like osteoporosis has kicked in. It's like, you know, it's like well stricken. Sorry, that's how I read the Bible. Isn't it wild though? Like throughout the Bible, it just seems barrenness becomes a burden that over a long time eventually flips and becomes a blessing. <laughs> we have uh, two couples in, in our church staff that were praying and praying and praying, nothing. Praying and praying and praying and nothing. And praying and praying and praying and nothing. And just recently, one couple just had their baby a couple weeks ago, praise God. Another one <laughs> is on the way. Someone say on the way. It, it could be on the way. You know, and it's funny because sometimes that thing that's not answered is the very thing that drives us to our knees. What is the burden in your life right now that is a future blessing? What is the mess that will turn into a miracle. We were with uh, some good friends at their house recently, had uh, some smash burgers. Man, that was, that was, anybody like smash burgers, by the way? Golly, come on. They had a whole technique, man. I'm getting discipled in smash, like, burger making. 
And it was cool because their daughter, who had went through some different things, after we were just praying, we were just kind of celebrating what God's doing in our life, and she, she like posted up, and she just went off on, you know what, man, I, I wouldn't want anyone to go through what I went through my first year of college. She said, but you know what? God's working all things together for the good who love God. She started preaching. I was like, oh, okay. Where's that? Let me get another smash burger, man, and celebrate the goodness of God. Well, here she is, a young woman gone through hell, and she's like, you know what? It's all working together. So stinking cool. Verse eight, one day, Zechariah, he was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. It was interesting that the priests, there were so many priests, all the Jews in the line of Aaron, all were automatically priests. So there were so many of them, they only served in the temple, uh, uh, most of them, one week every two years. It was kind of like... Um, like the army reserve light kind of deal. And so it was his turn. Verse nine, as was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. I mean, that was a very select few who would actually have that privilege. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Just imagine if you came to church, I love church, and all of a sudden, like, you're in worship, all of a sudden, just an angel just started floating your way. I believe it in Jesus' name. Okay, staying to the right, in this sense, look at verse 12. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. You would be too. This guy is swole. It's, I, I wrote this in my notes, and I just wanna say this. I might even just read it. Because every time we gather together, the reason we call it a worship encounter is because, man, that's our prayer, that you would encounter God. This is not encountering Todd. This is encountering God. I'm on the front row many times. I'm in worship, and I'm like, man, these people need a breakthrough. They, they, they are bankrupt right now. They are hurting. They're working through relational strain. They, they're overwhelmed, and they need a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And that's why, it's, it's like, that's exactly what's happening. They're walking into the temple. He's doing his deal, serving God, and bam, has an encounter with the, this angel. We need divine revelation. We need supernatural vision. Right now, you need, you need God to open your eyes. There's been a veil over your, like, your understanding of God. Some of you are new here. Your understanding of God is sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, say this, and do that. And, and you need a revelation and the veil to be open and you need to go, oh my goodness, I have a God who loves me, who's a father who wants a relationship with me. He sent his son to, to, to connect us together. That divine, I don't know why I'm so excited right now. Y'all just need to tell me to relax a little bit right now. I pray that the Holy Spirit would do something miraculous. He's able, even in a moment. I've been singing this worship tune in my car lately. Um, oh, golly, what's the name of it? It's Elevations track number two or three. What is it, Rachel? What, I mean, y'all are gonna sing it pretty soon. What is it? No, the, the one, there, it's like in a moment. The Lord, the Lord just hits you in a moment. All of a sudden, I feel him coming. All of a sudden, there's something, up, I don't know why I just went there, but some, <laughs> some of y'all just, just need a, a fresh touch. Uh, William McDonald, I was, on Friday, is my commentary day. I love what he said. He said this, with priest and people engaged in prayer, it was an appropriate time and setting for divine revelation. The encounter with the holy, it happens. <laughs> so because of it, Big Zach freaked out, I would be too. But the angel reassures him, verse 13, but the angel said, man, don't trip, Zach, all right? God has heard your prayer. Those of you that are lacking faith right now and you're like, I'm stopped praying because I've been praying for this for years. I'm just gonna stop. He, not, he does not hear me. Can I just say, God answers prayer. He hears your prayer. He hears your cry. He might not answer it the way you want to, but he will answer it. He hears. He hears your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. 
you'll have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. It's funny, when we went to the hospital room with a staff couple and saw their baby girl, I, I was grinning the whole time. I had like, you ever get perma smile? Like and your, your cheeks hurt, you ever have that? I was just in there and my wife in particular, she's holding this little baby girl and praying for her and prophesying and I'm just, I'm just like, I'm looking at my wife and she's like, you know, the cheese smile, it's like, Great joy, gladness, many will rejoice at his birth. What's, what's interesting about Zechariah and Elizabeth, can I just show you this? Zechariah's name, his name means God remembers. Elizabeth's name means his oath. So how about this? When they come together, God remembers his oath. In Malachi chapter four, it was predicted that Elijah the prophet would come Guess what? John the Baptist came in the same spirit of Elijah, and so his promise will be revealed. How? When they come together. You know, there's something, there's married couples right here. The only way God's will will be done is as you partner together. Some some people will have a problem with Denise and I. I'm like, hey man, I cannot do this without my wife. And this will, God's will, through what he wants to do at Love Church and beyond, cannot happen if I don't have my helpmate with me, serving and leading and pastoring women. Do you know, by the way, we have more ladies at this church than we have dudes? I want Denise to pastor y'all ladies, man. I can't do it. I don't speak your language at times. I need my wife. Huh? Can I get an amen at church right now? I, I need her. And together, this God remembers his oath. Verse 15, for he'll be great in the eyes of the Lord. This is talking about Johnny the Baptist who will eventually be born. This miracle baby, he must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He was gonna, have the, he was gonna take the Nazarite vow from his mother's womb, be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. How about that? <laughs> and look at, his, look at his mission. He will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah, which I just alluded to. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Oh, there's so much in here. I just wanna zone in on a couple things. Number one, Johnny the Baptist, he's the forerunner of Christ. What was he gonna do? Turn people to the Lord. And let me just once again tell you guys, that's our number one focus. All I want is people to experience what I've been able to experience. Turn people to God. Let them see who he truly is in the Bible, not for what their granddad says or their mama or the pastor, but what the word of God says about who he is. Turning people to them. Turn the hearts. I was sitting with a man just last week. I was eating my oatmeal in between worship encounters. And I met a man who is applying for our 180 program. And he's like, man, I really just, man, I need, I, I, I want more of God and I need, and I was just thinking, man, like, that's what we exist for, turning men around, turning men around, turn their hearts back to God so now they can lead their children and lead generations and change that. That's what I'm in the business of. The little nuances of different stuff, man, that's just, I wanna see men and women fully devoted to Christ, turning from their old ways, get to experience God's best, and then seeing what happens after that. That is what I want to see, turning people, and then preparing people. I like that. Prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. I just want to read this out of Ephesians 4. Jot it down. You can study it more, but I just, I'm going to literally read 11 through 16, and this is what part of our role as leaders in the church should be preparing people, preparing people. Listen to what it says. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So by the way, that scripture talks about a wide variety of gifting in the leadership of a church. It's not just one leader. It's a vast group of leaders. And by God's grace, he's given so many different pastors here different gifts and we call it the five-fold ministry right from Ephesians 4, and you see that. There's some people, like Cap's watching right now. Pastor Cap will bring a prophetic message up in your grill. 
and I love it, I need that. Coach, Coach Michael O'Connell or Pastor Michael O'Connell, that dude, will, that dude will get you ready to run through a brick wall. Pastor Ben, he, he's the energizing buddy. He'll just, 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 just like be doing wind sprints. Like, you know, Denise Dawson will come up and she will, man, she will share how to get your heart clean before God. She'll prophesy too, by the way, and just all of a sudden read your mail. That's why, man, that's why I love having her as my wife. I could, man, I could be thinking, she's like, man, what have you been thinking about? Like, she just, see, so, I love it. I love what God's done with the leaders. And, and then verse 12 their work, excuse me, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. What I love about the leadership, we, we are, we're doing this together, but we are doing the work. It's not y'all, us. Us together as a church. We are the church and we exist for the world. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we'll no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We'll not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak, watch this. Love church, can I humbly ask you? Here it is right here. Speak the truth in love. Growing in every way more and more like Christ, who's the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, all of us. It's, there's room for all of us and all of our different personalities, different bents. Each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow. Thank you for helping me grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of, oh, come on now. And full of, that's it, that's it. That's it. So <laughs> this angel, he, man, he is, he's prophesying, he's telling exactly what's gonna happen through John the Baptist's life, addressing this deep prayer that they've been praying for years. Unfortunately, Big Zach has a bout with doubt like all of us have. Verse 18, here's the fumble. You guys ready for it? Then Zach said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? <laughs> Where are my people like when you go on a trip, you have to know like every bit of the itinerary, okay? You gotta know everything. <laughs> Where are my people that are like, I don't care. I know I'm going to Florida. I don't really care what happens. Okay, see? That's a picture of the church right, <laughs> right there. How can I be sure this is gonna happen? I need a sign, you know? And then what does he say right after that? I'm an old man, dude. And my wife, she's also well along in years. <laughs> Here's what I was reading. I was like, how many excuses do we have as Christians to limit what God's gonna do in and through our life? Like, man, I'm old. Some, it's all relative. Some of y'all are like, no, you're young. Some of y'all are like, yeah, you are old, dude. Like, Get your hair, losing hair, losing muscle mass. Like Kyle's like, dude, I need you on some protein over here. Like, I don't know why I just said that. I just did. <laughs> I'm old. But what is your excuse? I heard someone recently on Self-Fed 365, they said to some of the older generation, y'all are trying to tap and be like, oh, the church is too young. No, we need you. We, we need everybody here. We're all better together. We need your wisdom. We need your experience. We need your grace, we need your time. Some of y'all, you're retired, you have all the time in the world. Have people over to your house, get them in the word. Some of these new people that are coming to Christ, there's a lot of really busy people and they are trying to disciple as many as they can and then there's some people that have a season. Can I just say, we need you. No excuses, we're old, how can I be sure? The angel's like, hey, I'm gay, bro. I stand in the very presence of God. I'm just picturing Gabriel like, hey, I literally am an angel that I hang out with God and stuff. <laughs> I'm in the very presence of God. Watch this. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. What, what, what else do you want, man? 
And then here's, here's the number one. If you're a note taker, write it down. Here's the repercussion. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you'll be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Which, by the way, I love. God's will is gonna be done, whether or not I fumble the biscuit or not. Like, he's gonna do what he wants to do. But there's a repercussion, silence. Could have been rejoicing. Instead, he questions, which any of us, anybody have a lapse of faith here at church? Can you just raise your hand in here? We've all had it. We've all had a bout with doubt. We've all you know, done something dumb in the heat of the moment. We've all succumbed to the flesh at times. And that's exactly what happens here. Pastor um, John Corson calls this the thief of unbelief. Let me just say this. There's always loss connected to unbelief. There's loss of your voice, of your testimony. There's loss of time. There's loss of progress. There's loss of opportunity. There's loss of life. This is, these are, the stakes are high. You remember the Israelites? <laughs> oh, these guys, man. I, I've been in this scripture. In your secondary reading, did you read it? Like a few weeks ago, Numbers 13. And Moses got 12 spies to go into the, the land of promise. And all 12, he said, hey, go scout out the land. This is the land. God's already given it to us. But we wanna have an idea of when we get there, what it's gonna be like. So 12 spies roll over there. You guys remember? Did you guys study this? They went into the land, and dude, the fruit is bomb. I mean, they, some of the fruit's so big, they had two dudes had to carry like a grape on a pole, like organic bomb fruit. The walls are fortified. There's giants in the land. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy, but God already promised that he was gonna do it. So they come back after the report, and did you remember the report? 10 of them were like, dude, I know God said we could do it, but man, I don't think we can. I mean, the giants are huge. Yeah, the fruit was good, but the giants. And tragically swayed everybody else to not believe and miss out. Talk about the thief of unbelief. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Caleb and Joshua were the two. Caleb and Joshua, they're like, God said we'd do it, let's, let's go right now. And everybody's like, nah, <laughs> we can't do it. Listen, maybe you're there right now and your lack of faith has cost you 40 years. There's always loss when it comes to unbelief, lack of faith. I've been there. I don't know how many times I'll, I'll start making excuses of God's clearly asked me to do something and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll punt because of fear or because I'm to this or I'm to that. Church, let me just tell you right now. God has asked us to begin a new location in, in North Omaha in the fall. August 11th is our first Sunday worship encounter. We've had three interest meetings. We've been building relationship. We've been meeting with people and asking God to do what only he can do. And I'm gonna tell you, at this church right now, we're gonna have Two different groups of people, because that's the humanity. You're gonna, we're gonna have 10 people that are like, it's too big, there's giants in the land, I don't know why we're doing this, I don't know why we're spending resource, but we're gonna have two, Joshua and Caleb, and the Lord's asked us to do it, we're gonna go. I don't care if it's a 100-year vision, we are going. And, and all my humble, listen, my, my, my humble request, if you're in the camp of 10, I'm asking that the Lord would just shift your heart to the two. No shame, no blame, but there, there is something about, we have to have unity in this church and walk by faith, not by sight, and go, you know what? We're not gonna let the thief of unbelief rob us of what he wants to do in and through this church. It will not happen. Um, maybe, let's, let me just get a little practical with you right now. What are, what are you having a tough time believing that God promised you and you're not seeing it in your life right now. James chapter one, so good. Jot this down, study it if that's you. Let God speak to you. Not Todd, let God speak to you. James chapter one, verse five. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God. He will give it to you. 
He will not rebuke you for asking. If you need some wisdom, you need insight, asking for clarity, look at verse six. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. And then I underline this in my Bible. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that's blown, tossed by the wind. And this, this convicted me, man. Watch verse seven. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. A lot of people whining at God, talking about, yeah, I'm not do this and this and that. Wonder, could it be? I'm not, it's not the only thing, but could it be we're getting a little cynical in our old age in Christian, getting a little bit crusty as Christians, and we're wondering why we don't have the fruit of the Spirit flowing from our hearts? Could it be? And then verse eight, their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they're unstable in everything they do. That hit me, man. That hit me, because a lot of times I got one foot in the world, and then I got one foot in Jesus, and I'm, I'm like, what do I believe? And right there, man, you got a fence right there. That's not a pretty sight right there. What could happen is now all of a sudden, I'm unstable in what I do. So, <laughs> golly, there's so much to this. The repercussion is silence, loss. And you read it. I mean, what happens next is so profound. Again, again, Elizabeth gets pregnant. The same angel, Gabriel, goes to Mary and says, oh, by the way, you're gonna have the Messiah eventually. No big deal. (laughs) Of course. Isn't it interesting, though, that Mary believed Gabriel? At first, she's like, dude, I'm a virgin. But then she, then the angel Gabriel says, you're gonna be over, overtaken by the Holy Spirit and you will actually birth the Messiah. And she's like, you know what? Well, let it be done. Talk about faith. What about you? If you're a lady right here, you're a virgin and like an angel comes to you and is like, hey, by the way, you're gonna have God's kid and stuff. She believes it. And then I think in about month six or something, you no, know, Mary goes to visit Elizabeth which I was thinking, why did she go visit? Maybe because Elizabeth could understand a miraculous conception like that and be able to go and have some relatability or maybe just to get out of the way because a lot of people were talking trash about Mary, talking about, oh yeah, she, she has God's baby and stuff. She bounces. They have this conversation. She rolls up into the set. And the Bible says that John the Baptist jumped in Elizabeth's womb when, when Mary rolled in. That's so cool. I don't have time to teach on that. You already read it. You already understood that, let me fast forward (laughs) to some good news. And some of you need to hear it today. Number two, yeah, you might have a repercussion for your lack of faith and maybe me as well, but I got got good news for number two. There's restoration that's about to happen. You see, he was mute until nine months come up. Elizabeth has the baby, and John obeys. Maybe there's something that you have not obeyed God, and you knew he's asked you to do it, and you've been walking around a mountain several times. Maybe the obedience is when that unlocks the blessing. Look at verse 57. When it was time for Elizabeth's baby to be born, she gave birth to a son, and when her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had been very merciful to her, everyone rejoiced with her. When the baby was eight days old, they all came for the circumcision ceremony. I was thinking about that. Instead of baby dedications, we're just gonna have circumcision ceremonies. (laughs) No. (laughs) Messing with you. They they wanted to name him Zachariah about his father. But check this out. But Elizabeth said, no, man, his name's John. What? No one in your family, in that culture, the firstborn son would always be named after the dad. This is what? This is, you're tripping. Verse 62, so they used gestures to ask the baby's father what he wanted to name him. Here's the test. All right, Zach, are you gonna obey? He motioned for his iPad. I, I'm try, I wish I could do this. I have it all ready for you. He motioned for his iPad with his Apple Pencil. Everyone's surprised. He wrote, <laughs> see if I can do this. His name is Zechariah? Oh, is what? 
It's what? <laughs> His name is It's so cool. So he obeys. Verse 64. Instantly, Zechariah could speak again. (laughs) And what did he do? He began praising God. And so would you if you hadn't been able to speak for nine months. Have you lost your voice lately? Tired in prayer? Your life isn't unfolding according to your plan. Maybe you've stepped away. There was some type of accident. There was some type of letdown. And for whatever reason, man, you step back from your faith. I just came to just encourage you, man, take the step back, get back in the game. You never know what God could restore. He can restore peace. He can restore hope. And it might not turn out exactly how you had anticipated, but he'll blow you away with what he can do. It's so cool. What I love about when Zechariah got his voice back, immediately he began praising and prophesying. Could it be You get your voice back at your work because there's someone that's been, God has an assignment for the person at work and you've closed your mouth and you've lost your witness. Maybe you come back to God and now you reopen your mouth because that person that's desperately in need for a change in their life, they're gonna actually get saved through your voice that has been restored. Through your actions, through your testimony. You never know what's gonna happen. Restoration. Repercussion, restoration, finally, revelation. (laughs) Verse 76, I I wanna skip all the way to verse 76. Listen to how he prophesies. Listen to the divine revelation he's predicting about his son who was just born. He said, my little son, and I would encourage parents, prophesy and pray over your kids all the time. Pray for their future spouse. Pray, Pray prophetic prayer over them. My little son will be called the prophet of the most high because you'll prepare the way for the Lord. You'll tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and guide us to the path of peace. He's prophesying John the Baptist would be the forerunner of Christ. He'd be preparing people for the Lord's return, to connect with God. And that's how we'll close today. God, thank you for this message. Thank you that you are helping by your grace. You're merciful, you're patient, you're helping by your grace, allowing us to get our voice back. And I pray against shame, against regret, against people stuck right now in what they have done in the past. I pray that the the old would be gone and there would be a return today. A return to faith, a return to obedience, a return to serving you, a return to surrender. Full restoration of your people. I pray that no weapon formed against us would prosper. The lips that have been sealed because of the thief of unbelief would be opened today. All for your glory, Jesus. You're on a mission here. You, you, wanna, you wanna connect with as many of your kids that would say yes. And you're using us, your church, our lives, our lips to reach the lost. So help us, God, for your glory in Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I wanna present a